Welcome back to Intercept U and our continuing series talking with folks about uh, the specifics of using SIPs in the field. Today we're talking with Joe Pasma. He's our national sales manager at Intercept. He's got a lot of years, many years of SIP experience. And we're going to talk about the codes because the codes are kind of ever changing, ever evolving. And so what we'd like to talk about, Joe, is two things. First of all, the building code. How do, how do Intercept SIPs fit together with the building codes, current building codes? It's interesting that you asked that question, John. Um, today, we hear a lot about high performance construction, offsite construction, um, things that really pertain to making a building, a, a house, a home, like commercial building, really energy efficient, but also needing to um, meet the structural aspects of things. SIPs themselves aren't new. They date back to the 30s. Um, in fact, the building codes have recognized structural insulated panels since the 2007 supplement of the 2006 IRC. And IRC is the International Residential Code. So prescriptively, there's, there's a, a portion of the code that does recognize SIPs from that aspect. Um, the neat thing that we as SIP manufacturers do is provide um, code reports and testing and data to substantiate the use of the SIPs um, for both roof and wall applications. Like you can see behind me here where we have trusses that are spaced 8 or 10 or 12 feet apart and roof panels over the top of those and, and the wall panels that are supporting them that are um, 14 to, to 20 feet to 24 feet tall. All of those pertain to the structural side of the code or the, the building code side of it. And contained in the building code then is the energy code. And that talks about how energy efficient the structure needs to be so that it's quote unquote sustainable or, or we're not um, using energy unwisely. And the building code and the people that write it have continually or they've been on a mission since 2000 when they started with the IBC and the IRC, the, the International Code Council. And they, they put things together in such a way that we hear a lot of um, pushback from residential builders that it's very difficult to meet what these energy codes are requiring from a, um, an efficiency standpoint. Um, they have to be tight. They can only have three to five air changes per hour, depending on which part of the country you're in. Northern parts of the country look to have three air changes per hour. Down in the south, they're looking at a, max, uh, a maximum of, of five air changes per hour. And then along with that is they're increasing the R values of the walls. So they're looking at the building code is looking at the combination of insulation as well as the tightness of the structure to be energy efficient. And builders are having a real hard time meeting some of those standards. And it's interesting, Sam Rashkin, um, he used to be with the DOE and a couple of, and, and another governmental agency. They, he was the one that set up um, a lot of the energy efficient programs that are out there. And he's recently written um, a follow-up, calls it Housing 2.0. It's the, the follow-up to his Housing 1.0 book. And now that he's not part of the government, he's expressing his opinion on how builders can help build sustainably and really um, provide a product to their customers that makes sense, that's energy efficient and goes beyond the first cost of the, the house itself. And he stresses um, that SIPs, provide that energy efficient envelope that builders really need to take a look at. So um, it's sort of like SIPs have been 30 years, 60 years too early and in their history. And now it's starting to happen that um, building, we can build faster. Well, <laughs> Sam's, Sam's mantra right now is, is faster, better, cheaper. And those of us in sales don't like to say cheaper. We like to say more cost effective, but he's pushing the cheaper side of things. And it, it encompasses a lot. And that in and of itself really ties the, the structural building code together, as well as the energy codes together. And SIPs fit well into both of those. 
So, so you just differentiated the two, the, the, the structural code or the building code versus the energy code. We like to talk about SIPs being two and a half times stronger than sticks. How does that, how does that tie together with the, the building code? Well, from the standpoint of, of spacing the studs at, at 12 or 16 or 24 inches on center, um, depending on what part of the country you're in, whether you're holding up heavy snow loads or high wind loads, you may have to reduce that spacing to, in order to um, increase the structural capacity of the wall system itself. In a stick build. Yes. And when you look at um, energy efficiency side of things, you, you hear them talking about um, oh, the, the, the framing efficiency. So they want to space the studs out 24 inches on center to minimize the thermal bridging that occurs within a stick framed wall. Well, now you flip over to SIPs and with the OSB carrying the structural loads and we have the, the load testing um, for the panels that show that they are two and a half to three times stronger than, than a stud wall with 16 inch on center studs. And yet you have a lot less thermal bridging. So it's really interesting to show that SIPs meet that kind of structure all in one piece. It's, it's really hard to differentiate the building code and the energy code because we hit it both. And SIPs yes. really nail both of them. Uh, they, they do have the strength. They naturally have the strength. That's where it started. That's where it started in the 30s. UW, uh, University of Wisconsin started messing around with sandwich panels. To, to find that strength and that they weren't worried about energy efficiency that just came naturally yes, <laughs> and yes absolutely. it's so fun to see the energy code start to add things like continuous insulation and higher r values we're already there and so uh, we really appreciate your insight thank you it's interesting you bring that up that we're already there um 20 years ago i did an addition on my house using intercept sips and one of the things that I find ironic and, it, and you touched on it back in 2000 there wasn't much for an energy code that we needed to meet and yet today the house that i live in is still way beyond code minimum so um it, it's cool to live in a structure that's so far ahead of the game both from a structural standpoint as well as the energy efficiency side of things i think so, we're, we tend to be the only industry that refers to building down to code yes. because code is the minimum legal standard or minimum legal requirement uh do we really want to build the minimum or do we want to build the, with the technology that's available and and you, you've just illustrated that you built with the technology available in 2000 and it's still meeting the energy code there was a paper that was written earlier um last week last month i forget and and the question that was brought forth in that discussion was what do we as builders need to bring to our customers don't we have a responsibility to not only have a good first cost side of things but what about those costs down the road? Um, how much does the mechanical system, how much are we paying in utilities for the building? And there are technologies that can save a lot from down the road kind of things. And SIPs are one of them. So yeah, I think we hit a lot of cylinders with this product. I'm tested and proven. Thank you. Really appreciate your insight. Thanks for having me.